I bought this Disney Princess Paint by Numbers colouring book for $2, and I'm about to spend 24 hours worth of drawing and painting time using a combination of cheap art supplies and also really expensive ones to see how far I can push myself using a kid's colouring book. Here are some helpful instructions on how to use this book, which I won't be following at all. Mission failed! We'll go next time! Off to a great start, I'm going to do a little warm-up painting before jumping into the more detailed artworks. There's still going to be blood though, you know I had to test out the red paint. With the warm-up done, it's time to move on to our first Disney Princess transformation. The wonderful Belle from Beauty and the Beast is getting a not-so-wonderful horror makeover. Can you guess the inspiration behind this one? These cheap watercolour paints are absolutely terrible, but let's see what I can do with them anyway. As a wise man once told me, a bad artist blames his cheap watercolour paints, but a great artist uses his expensive Copic markers on the next drawing after this one. Is that cheating? I don't know. This is my video, so I do what I want. Shout out to everyone who picked up on The Nightmare Before Christmas, Sally, inspiration behind this one. One of my favourite childhood movies, I used to watch it before Christmas each year. Fond memories of that one. It's time to grab my trusty Copic markers and see what I can do to one of these pages using expensive art supplies instead of the cheap ones that come with the book. Will it make much of a difference? And that is what I can do with some expensive Copic markers. How do you think it compares? Do you prefer the charming look of the cheap watercolours? Or do you prefer the vibrancy of the expensive Copics? Let me know. I'm mixing things up and doing a horror transformation in a paint with water colouring book. I feel like the last couple of drawings weren't very detailed, so I want to do a transformation with inspiration from one of my favourite manga artists. Junji Ito. With inspiration from the horror legend, you know this is going to be a creepy one. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with the eyes for this character, so I tried a couple of different things but ended up just blacking them out because I felt like it looked creepier. Now it's time to just add water! It's time to put some colour into Sebastian the Crab. And the crazy thing is, the watercolours in this book that are literally on the page and you're mixing water onto seem like they're better quality than the other book. I wasn't expecting that.
like seafood. Crab skewers coming right up! Back in the old paint by numbers colouring book, I've got this hideous line work of Cinderella to transform. And to be fair, it's already terrifying, so it shouldn't be hard. This one's for the gamers out there. I've been watching season 2 of The Witcher recently, and I got inspired to do a Noon Wraith transformation. Is this enough detail for you guys? I think it's time to ruin it with some cheap watercolour paints. Nice! One does not simply spend hours of fine detailed line work without ruining it by covering it with cheap watercolour paints hiding that detail. Next! You thought I'd forget about doing a Frozen artwork in this video? People love Frozen! I've never seen it so I don't know but there's a cute little snowman! Wait a second, there's something off about Olaf. Olaf with that cheeky grin, always up to mischief. Does anyone know where the kitchen knife is? I swear I left it on the bench. And also, where's Snuffles? Olaf loved playing with the new family cat. She must be around somewhere. When a normal person looks at this, they see the outline of Tiana from Princess and the Frog. When I look at it, I see the building blocks of one of the creepy nurses from Silent Hill. <laughs> Yeah, I consume way too much horror material, and it's probably not healthy for me. At this stage, there are some pesky lines from the original line work, which I need to get rid of somehow. I could use liquid paper, or do it the hard way. Yeah. That's right, we're doing it the hard way. I'm going to do a janky as hell background with messed up perspective to try and mask these pesky lines. Don't think too much about the tiny door in comparison to the giant nurse. Realistic perspective means nothing in the horror realm. Your mind warps all sense of reality, and doors are smaller than giant nurses. What do you guys reckon? Did I do a good job hiding those pesky lines? And don't say anything about the tiny door. I'm very insecure about my door size. I've got a new Disney book for the last drawing of this video. I'm going to be transforming Pocahontas with my Copic markers. I put a lot of time into this video, so if you want to show some support, you can give it a thumbs up. And also, if you want to see more content like this, horror drawings and creepy stuff, you should definitely subscribe. I upload new videos every week, and that way you won't miss out.
Pocahontas is performing some dark ritualistic magic. Ooh, look out for the red butterflies. They'll eat your eyes. And on that note, that brings us to the end of the video. Thanks to all of my awesome patrons for supporting my channel, and thank you to everyone who watched this video to the end. Really appreciate you all, and I'll catch you in the next video.